All right, the question is, what is a solar charge controller and what do they do? All right, so in a nutshell, a solar charge controller regulates the power that comes out of the solar panel, just then pumps it up into the batteries. Once the batteries are full, the charge controller shuts off the circuit and limits the power going to the batteries. Okay, so with that being said, these are Sun Gold 100 amp hour um, charge controllers. Now if we go down to this, we start at the beginning. There's our main home, home screen on it. It says, you see here, so there's a sun here showing that the solar panels are getting a little bit of power. It's almost dusk here. So it's still producing power to the batteries. Um, we're at 52.8 volts sitting at the batteries. The solar panels, let's see the little panel here, shows 122.3 volts coming out of the solar panel. It says the batteries are reading 52.9 volts and that the batteries are full. So it's just basically trickling two amps over to the batteries right now. Um, see the solar panel showing and it says that those three panels hooked up to this inverter I'm sorry into this con charge controller are producing 109 watts right now and that, like I said the sun's not even on them um, the sun's pretty much behind the trees and going down um, and basically I only got three panels on this right now because we just finished the roof and um, that's all I have up there right now because I had some hardware issues um, so this coming week we'll be putting up the rest of the panels which are 32 panels okay as you can see we have four um, charge controllers here the reason why we have four is these have a limit and you read the specs on each on whatever kind you have but there's a limit on how much power these can handle um, these in particular right here are sun gold the big sun gold ones they're a thousand I'm sorry they're a hundred amps output um, that they'll produce output to the batteries and then the input is only 52,000 no 5200 yeah 5200 watts of power from the PVs the um, another word for solar panels is PV so the solar panels um, my solar panels we're gonna have 32 of them and they're 550 watts each Okay, so the way I figured out my math for what I'm hooking up to these is I took the 5,200 watts that this can handle and I divided it by how many watts my panels are. So my panels are 550 watts. So I took 5,200 divided by 550, which gave me just about, I mean, it gave me, well, 10 it'd be um, 5,500 watts, which is too much. And so we went with eight on each each one and actually means we have 32 panels that works out eight per is 32 so um so the way i wired the panels themselves is i took four sets of panels i'm sorry one set of four panels i wired that in series and then i took another four panels wired those in series and ran the um, wires the pb wires off of those two sets of four to a combiner box the combiner box then has a, um, a uh, fuse um, breaker on it. So if there's any problem with it, it pops the fuse. It's got an earth ground on it, so it pops the fuse. Um, but it also takes those two series um, arrays of four each, four panels each array, so making it eight panels. But it takes those and it parallels them, parallels, <laughs> parallels them together so I still have um, the voltage that I need for this and keeps the amperage down, the voltage down, but it keeps, um, it multiplies all of the wattage. So it keeps, keeps my wattage up and keeps the voltage down to where these can handle um, what they need. But take a look at your specs on yours and make sure you, you know, you know match the, uh, the PV wattage and the amps input. Um, the wattage, like I said, for these it's 5200 watts. And I think the voltage is 250 volts that this will handle. Well, if you combine eight panels together, you're going to be above 250 volts. So 
doing four in series and I'm just having three of them here is like 170 volts. So I put another one on there. It'll probably be um, probably about 240. And then if I can parallel them together, it'll basically keep eight panels instead of four panels at that voltage um, for what this can handle input. So, so our PV wires come in from the panels um, and uh, actually the panels and then a combiner box with a fuse in it. Then it comes into our, our switch legs um, and these are just basically on, off. Uh, to kill the power from the solar panels to these. Um, like I said, these three are, aren't even being used yet. They're hooked up to the battery, but they're not actually tied to any panels yet up on the roof because, like I said, I we just finished re-roofing the house and I haven't put them up yet. Uh, but I do have three of them up, and they're hooked to this one. Um, so basically, the power comes in. Um, the negative goes right into the panel. The hot comes into this, and then jumpers from that into the input of that. Then you have these two bigger wires, and these are two AUG wires, not AUT, but two AUG wire that go up to this bus bar. And this is DC voltage. Um, so it goes up to this bus bar where all of these tie together on the bus bar. And then it comes out with two AUG wire. So see how much bigger that is? See how much bigger those are? That's two AUG wire. That's two slash zero. And that's two AWG, okay? On the bottom of these panels, I'm a, inverters actually, God, I can't talk today. The bottom of these inverters, the input down here, those are four AUG wire. I don't know that two AUG wire would fit in there. Um, so I think four AUG is about as big as you can put in the back. That's an 18,000 watt inverter. Um, and that's basically what runs our sub panel here. Um, but anyway, so we come out of this, we go into another breaker, which cuts the, the batteries off from this from this bus bar. And we have two bus bars, the cold side and hot side. So it basically shuts off the power of all of these from the batteries. Then it comes out of the batteries on that two aught wire to the bus bars on the side of the batteries. And these are five 100 amp hour batteries. And this is the other bus bar on their side. I'm gonna put another one of these rubber grommets over the top of that now that I'm done um, add the stuff to it and then I come out of that with two aught wire that's two slash zero wire this is, this is two aught comes into this 400 amp breaker and then into the bottom of the inverter okay so then out of the inverter we go into this sub panel and that's all the stuff I have on the sub panel now which is my water well every outlet in the house every light in the house the shop all the wood shop um, two wall cadet heaters and this machine 18 kW Sun gold I haven't been able to get over 42 percent of its max capacity with what I have in there and I've I went in the house and turned on everything in the house that I could think of turned on the water turned on everything so I'm thinking I'm gonna add believe it or not I'm thinking I'm going to add my hot tub to this sub panel and my water heater to this sub panel. And maybe even all three of these are wall cadet heaters. Our house is everything's electric in it. So I'm thinking I might put those, another one of those wall cadet heaters in here also. I've got, that's an empty, that one's empty, and then those doubles are empty. So I got room to do it. I just matter of what this bad boy can handle. Like I said, if you look at this, like right now it's running at 15 up down to 6%. And it's, you know, it's, wife's in there cooking dinner, the TV's probably on. Um, anyway, it's it's that 6%. I've never gotten it above 42% with everything turned on. Um, I mean, actually going in the house and turning everything on. Anyway, guys, um, that's that's our story on a sun on the uh, solar charge controllers. Um, I you would the only time you need these is if you're charging batteries because it regulates what you can get. So if you if let's say you didn't have these and you had 32 panels hooked up, each panel is 550 watts. 
you'd be pumping um, what's that like 17,000 watts of power during a sunny day constantly pumping into these batteries and if the batteries were totally full which wouldn't take very long if you're pumping 17,000 watts into it, it wouldn't take long to charge these batteries um, probably two hours and then the rest of the day it would basically be overcharging them but you don't want to do that you don't want to overcharge them so that's what a charge controller does if you're hooking up to a um, net metering system you don't need them because your PV wire off your off your um, solar panels goes in and ties directly to your um, net metering inverter which then so basically you would take these wires and plug them right back to the inverter out of the AC of the inverter you go in and tie it into a breaker in your commercial power panel and then it would go out to the smart meter on the side of the house and they would be able to track what kind of power you're selling back to the commercial power company um, we're not doing that at this point we're not doing that um, if it comes to the point where I, I burn too much power in the winter because like I said we have wall cadet heaters in every room and a hot tub and so if, we, if our bill is too high, I will probably get another inverter and take one of these charge controllers, one of these sets of batteries, or I might, I don't know if I can get all 32 panels up on my roof, so I might have two extras. I might just take those two extras and tie them to, that would be, you know, that'd be 1100 watts in the sun producing 12 hours a day. I could sell that power back to the and get my credits for my uh, net metering or I could take more of these off of one of these and uh, and do it you know do whatever anyway so there's an option there anyway guys thanks for watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up and please subscribe we could definitely use um, some some subscribers always um, solar questions leave us a question we'll see what we can do to answer it have a great day guys thanks for watching